Kilroy from the road. Today I'm at Pea Ridge National Military Park. This is a Pea Ridge battlefield, which was a battle during the American Civil War, right on the border between Missouri and Arkansas, or pretty close to it. Been to this park one other time with the whole family, and uh, but today by myself, because I had to take my son to the SAT, right down the road in Bentonville. And uh, while he's taking the test, I'm gonna walk around the park. And I thought you all might want to walk with me. Let's start on the inside. There's a little museum inside the uh, visitor center for the Battle of Pea Ridge. And this is the back area of it. It's not a huge museum, but it does cover the battle. And here is uh, a little bit of a map of it right here. As you can see, you are here, so we are right there. Um, an interesting part right here, I'll try to cover this later, there's a little segment right here is where they put their first, uh, the Union forces set up first along the Sugar Creek uh, River, but uh, then they were outflanked by the Confederate forces. The Confederate forces came up around this way, and so these forces immediately had to come up to here and regroup around a headquarters around this area right here. Uh, there was some, as you can see, there's Lee Town, and there was some battle, there was a lot of fighting right along this area as the uh, Confederate forces were flanking it, but the, the, the main Confederate force actually outran its, its coverage, so to speak, uh, and kind of got ahead of itself uh, up this way. Um, and did not have an, uh, enough support there. And then the Union forces were able to regroup here. And then of course, there was a huge, um, we'll, we'll see this, there was a huge uh, artillery formation along here and a battle at the, uh, the Eckhorn Tavern, which you'll see that. Actually, the artillery is probably around this area here. So a little bit of a little map there. Let's push the button here. Mid-morning, General McCulloch, 7,000 Confederates march in close order along Ford Road. As they trudge east toward Elkhorn Tavern, a small force of Iowa and Missouri cavalry, only about 600 men, fired into the massive rebel formation. Texas and Arkansas cavalry sweep over Foster's farm. Within minutes, the Federals flee south toward Lee Town. Not another little run. Late morning, outnumbered, a few Union regiments from Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio off the Confederate advance at Wilkerson's Field. Mid-afternoon, Confederate Generals McCulloch and McIntosh are killed in the belt of trees south of Foster's farm. The Confederates on the Lee Town side of the battlefield lose momentum as thousands of troops await new orders. stubborn retreat. Late morning, in the woods overlooking Canyon Ravine, Union regiments from Iowa and Missouri fall back. The Missouri State Guard regiments keep pressing ahead of the ravine. Cannon roar over the wooded ridges near the Elkhorn Tavern. Van Dorn's surprise push toward Elkhorn Tavern slows to a crawl. in the woods. Late afternoon, close range fighting is so intense inside Marcus Woods that men from both armies throw themselves flat on the ground to survive the hurricane of flying lead. Chaos and combat rage through Morgan's woods. 
Dense smoke from thousands of muskets obscures the darkening forest. Elkhorn Tavern taken. Evening. Missouri State Guard regiments drive the federal defenders back from the Elkhorn Tavern in Clemens Field. At sunset, Confederates make their final charge at Clemens Field. And here is a map of the March 8th Union counterattack. Let's push the button here. Storm of shot and shell. 8 a.m. General Franz Siegel orders you conductors to focus on first one Confederate target, then another, along the base of Elkhorn Mountain. sound the charge. 10,000 Union men are visible in one place, stretching between Coxfield and Braxfield. They charge in unison across the open fields. The Confederates give way. Such a sight was so rare that its terrifying grandeur was seared into the memories of every man present. Disastrous retreat. The Confederates retreat, escaping to the north, east, and west. Late in the evening, some reassemble at Van Winkle's Mill. Famished men and horses eat everything in sight. Hundreds wander off in search of food and never return to the ranks. Most of Van Dorn's Confederates make their way back to their winter camps in the Boston Mountains. And for point of reference, the Boston Mountains are this way. This is further into Arkansas and the Boston Mountains. This is north into Missouri. If you've ever been to a battlefield museum, this probably looks familiar. There's usually weapons and uniforms from the uh, from that period or from that battle even. Uh, some museums are quite involved, like Gettysburg and Chickamauga. Other ones like Murfreesboro and Pea Ridge and uh, Prairie Grove are a little bit, you know, less involved but still quite a lot of good information is in these museums so i do recommend stopping by them when you come in uh, when you go visit a battlefield here are the commanders at p ridge over here on the left are the union commanders the united states army army of the southwest And then over on here on the left is the Confederate States of the West. These are the Southern leaders. Um, Earl Van Dorn was the major general here. And then the museum goes on. Here's a view of the battlefield from inside the visitor center. And if you look out there, They've kept it pretty much the way it was uh, at the time of the battle, minus you know the farmsteads and the settlers. But if you look off in the distance there, over here is uh, Elkhorn Tavern is behind those crop of trees right there. And you can see that 
mountain back there, or that hills back there, that's Elkhorn Mountain, and there's a rocky outcrop there with which there were some quite a bit of battling. Uh, the Confederate forces held up there, and the Union forces um, basically smoked them out. But you've got the whole battlefield. Then towards this direction, as you can see from the map here, you've got uh, Ford's Field off in the distance there, and then off uh, even further, you can't really see it, but it's also on the side over there would be Lee Town, and then um, quite a few, quite a bit of battling off in the distance. And we'll go by portions of this. And here is a map of the Pea Ridge National Military Park. As you can see, here is the visitor center here, where we are right now. And there's a driving trail that goes all the way around to Elkhorn Tavern, where you can stop at each of the different locations and see how the battle unfolds. Uh, they're doing quite a bit of construction since the last time I've been here and uh, updating the roads. But you can see kind of where the battlefield sits. And again, there's that, I'll try to catch that today too, but you see down below here is where the first, the little Sugar Creek trenches, where the federal trenches started, because they were going to try to catch the Union forces coming up this direction, but they, uh, sorry, the Southern forces coming up this direction, but they outflanked them and kind of went up this way. A lot of battle, uh, a lot of uh, fierce fighting around Lee Town. And just north of there, in fact, the, the Union forces lost two of their leaders in the woods just north of uh, Lee Town there, right south of, the, I think, Ford's Farm. So, as you can see, there is the entire battlefield. This is stop one along the Pea Ridge uh, battlefield uh, tour route. And you can see here, this is talking about the Trail of Tears land route. Uh, if you will go back to my Fort Smith video uh, from the road, you'll notice here that uh, there's many routes that left the southeast uh, United States, uh, the exodus of uh, Native Americans, uh, moving them to uh, reservations. And you can see here that the, uh, on, when I did the Fort Smith video, there's Fort Smith. So that was one route and we covered that. This was another route that kind of went through um, Missouri and then kind of came down through uh, northwest uh, Arkansas and right in here. Actually, the route that we're on probably is this blue route, this blue uh, dotted route here um, that came in there to, to come, come to uh, Oklahoma. So uh, not the most proud moment of American history, but it's history nonetheless, and something that we need to know about. So you have a little trail that goes down here and uh, talks about 60 miles to Woodhall's Depot, and then to Charleston, Tennessee is a 720 miles. So this was part of the land route. And then if you go a little bit further out over here, it's a little bit dense so I probably won't go too far into here but you'll eventually get to um, to some more of the uh, fighting took place uh, along Pea Ridge so this is stop one this is stop two at the Pea Ridge battlefield and this is where Curtis's headquarters are at or the Union forces where they set up their initial headquarters again they were thinking the they were going to catch the southern forces along the uh, Sugar Creek, which is that direction, and this was where they set up their headquarters. And then when they found out that they were outflanked, they hurriedly moved the headquarters uh, and their forces uh, over towards uh, Elkhorn Tavern, which is in that direction. And as you can see here, this is what the Union forces expected. They expected uh, an attack coming along this line, coming up from the south and from Sugar Creek area. And this is where they started, you know, setting up their forces. And again, they had some uh, 
trenches even further south of here along Sugar Creek, but they got outflanked. The southern forces came along that direction, a little far off on that direction, and then came around and flanked the Union forces. And then the, the battles, most of the, the there was uh, the final battles on the, um, the end of March 7th and beginning of March 8th are often that direction near Elkhorn Tap. Stop three along the Pea Ridge Battlefield, Lee Town. The battle or the fighting took place just north of here in some uh, heavy woods here. It was a uh, Confederate attack and the um, Union forces held there. A lot of bloody uh, fighting, including the loss of two higher ranking uh, Union commanders. But Lee Town was more of a hospital station. They brought a lot of the wounded from that battle to uh, this uh, village, Lee Town here. Uh, there's no uh, remnants of the town here, but uh, it basically was down this trail here. Uh, and right now it's just kind of, the, there's a little bit of a clearing down there, but the, all remnants of the, uh, the village are lost to history but as i said this was uh, there wasn't as much there wasn't com uh, conflict here or a battle here this was mostly uh, a village or a town where the wounded from the heavy fighting just north of here north and to the west of here uh, uh, very heavy fighting and the wounded from that was brought here as you can see there's a sign here that talks a little bit about Lee Town, and this is generally where it stood. This is, uh, oh, maybe uh, almost a mile, a little over a mile maybe from where the stop two was at. So down some uh, uh, one lane road. But as you can see here, it was relatively small. Two stores, a blacksmith shop, a Masonic hall, church, school, and several residents. So this is all that is left of Lee Town. Stop four, Lee Town Battlefield. Now we're starting to look like a Civil War battlefield. As you can see, some artillery and some cannon placements there. And we've got some more uh, cannon pace placements way off in the distance over here. You know, I think I misspoke earlier. I think I said earlier that uh, the Union lost some leadership. It was the, the South lost two leaders. Uh, and they lost them right in this area right here. Uh, and, you know, the, the South had, had, uh, had kind of had the surprise because they had done a flanking uh, maneuver, basically coming around the far west of the Union forces um, and then kind of went up north here, north of these woods. And then uh, when the Union forces came up to meet them here, uh, they came out and there was a lot of, uh, came out of the woods and then there was a lot of fighting right along this whole area south of those uh, woods there. Uh, and as I said, I might've said earlier that it was Union lost leaders. It was the South that lost two leaders. In fact, they lost uh, ben McCulloch and James McIntosh. Uh, ben McCulloch was right along the edge of those trees over there and uh, was taken out, I think, by Union uh, skirmishers. And so you can see here, this marker here, Crisis in Command, is talking about, uh, we must not let the men know that General McCulloch is killed. So he was Texan. Ben McCulloch had formed a division of some 7,000 strong, just out of sight behind the trees in the distance uh, and before ordering a massive charge into Oberson's cornfield, um, he was Yankee skirmishers behind the rail fence shot him. So I assume th uh, if that rail fence is in the same spot right there, maybe that's the ones that uh, got him. But it was right outside of those trees over there. Uh, along the line of those trees is where McCulloch was uh, taken out. Um, finally, second in command, uh, James McIntosh took over only to die while, die while leading a charge out of the woods. So you had McClellick taken out by skirmishers behind the, um, the, the rail line of the, the uh, wooden, wooden fence. 
And then James McIntosh led a charge out of the woods and was taken out uh, in that charge. So you had two of the top leaders for this area of, of the forces that had kind of came up through the flanking uh, were taken out within minutes of each other pretty much. Uh, and there was no leadership on the uh, on the Confederate side. That led to a kind of a stall in this combat here because, uh, again, the, the uh, Confederates kind of had the surprise. They had outflanked them. The Union forces were hurriedly moving up from the south to try to meet uh, the Confederate forces. But without the leadership, the, uh, the attack kind of stalled. Uh, there wasn't a lot of... Um, you know, uh, initiative or momentum to carry the attack uh, forward. And so uh, the Union forces were able to kind of stand here uh, and hold back some of the Confederate forces because they kind of stalled. Now, the battle went forward uh, and went, I think, further into this area and these woods over here as well. But again, the, without the, the Union, or sorry, the Confederates had kind of lost their initiative uh, with the loss of their leadership and did not have uh, did not have the command to you know move their troops forward and to, to press the attack. And so this is a, a classic example of how important your command is and how important your leaders are uh, in a battlefield, especially at this time period of, uh, of a military conflict. I mean, up until this time, command and leadership is pretty important as well. But, um, you know, this really, uh, the, the South paid the price by losing their leaders at this point of the battlefield. So a lot of their efforts to outflank and to have surprise and the initiative kind of died along with two of their leaders right here. This is stop five along the Pea Ridge Battlefield route and it's called Two Armies Collide. Basically, the Confederate forces, about 7,000 strong, were crammed uh, along a road over here. And then out of these trees, uh, Union forces came out, actually uh, three batter, three uh, uh, cannons or unlimbered and started uh, firing on the uh, Confederate forces. Um, so again, kind of an unexpected engagement. However, the uh, Southern forces, pushed back and ran them from the field. And part of those forces were uh, two regiments of Cherokee riflemen uh, took part in the Confederate charge that captured the Union cannon and drove back the Iowa cavalry on this field. Four months later, some of these same uh, Cherokees changed sides and fought for the Union. So you have an engagement here with uh, American Indian or Native American forces uh, fighting along with uh, the Confederates and driving the Union forces from this field. This is stop six along the route and there was no fighting here. However, this is basically showing the route the uh, Confederate forces took uh, along a back road called Bentonville Detour. Uh, Van Dorn was trying to go up this road uh, which kind of goes up Elkhorn Mountains, which is what we're entering into right now, or El Elkhorn Mountain, maybe that's a better way to call it. It's more of a, uh, an eroded hill. Uh, might have been a mountain at one point in prehistoric days, but um, was taking his troops along this uh, route, basically doing a huge uh, outflanking uh, and behind the uh, Union uh, rear at this point and trying to get uh, telegraph telegraph road which is down that way over there uh, so if you look off to the south here you can't see it with through the vegetation but the boston mountains are off in the distance there which is in uh, in uh, northwest uh, arkansas but you see some mile markers here so 29 miles that way is fayetteville and then you go down here 10 miles that way is rogers and then you go down this direction here you can see that uh, 11 miles that way is bentonville arkansas and then four miles that way is p ridge so you know right off over there in the distance are the uh boston mountains and up along you know climbing up this hill or elkhorn mountain were the Confederate forces 
trying to do a, uh, a, a huge flanking maneuver actually behind the Union's rear where the uh, Union forces were down along that area where we uh, were at uh, a little bit earlier in this video. Now we're coming up to the East Overlook, uh, where we were just at was the what's called the West Overlook or Stop 6. This is Stop 7 along the Pea Ridge Battlefield route. And as you can see here, this gives a much better perspective and overlook of the entire battlefield. So if you look off in the distance right, it's hard to see there, but uh, kind of over there, we see some cars parked in a building. Well, that's the visitor center slash museum where we started out. And then as you, uh, there's a road that you travel along that goes along those trees. Um, you know, the for all the different stops are along that road. So off right over in there or that area behind those trees is, is Lee Town. And then you keep on going and over in that area is the uh, battlefield where the uh, two uh, confederate leaders were uh, killed and then you keep going along this uh, road here that comes up along this back road which is uh, this is kind of elkhorn uh, mountain and uh, this is where the confederate forces came and what they were trying to do was go along this road and this ridge here to get to telegraph road which is off over in this distance over here and as you can see here uh this has got a little bit of a of a explanation of the battle here you can see there's telegraph road the um and the visitor center the way it is today uh and then elkhorn tavern which we'll get to is the next stop uh, again that's i think a stop eight but it kind of shows you where the confederate forces uh came around so they came uh, around this hill or down Elkhorn Mountain into uh, Battlefield right out over there, which is Elkhorn Tavern. Um, and then, you know, during the, the night, here's night moves here, um, the Union forces reinforced and came up along, uh, along because again, they were all set up south of there, uh, pretty much directly uh, south of where I have the uh, camera pointing right now, is where the Union headquarters was at. And so uh, they had to move their forces along this area here to uh, meet the uh, Confederate advance because they had gotten behind them. And then, you know, uh, it says right here, it was the grandest thing I ever saw. It was an extreme rare in the Civil War to be able to see an entire army lined up for a fight with all regiments within sight of each other. And so, so this is the case here where the Union forces were facing this direction and firing along the, um, firing up here into these, into this hill here, or to this mountain here, uh, firing against the Confederate forces, which were coming down this hill and coming down the road, which is right over to our left over there. Uh, but th this is uh, the, the the Union had been uh, basically caught, caught from behind. And then along these uh, rocks here, slaughter in the rocks is what they're calling here, uh, the Confederate forces manned up uh, or held out in this real rocky area here. So if you look here, this is the kind of a rocky outcrop along Elkhorn Mountain here. Uh, and the, a lot of the Confederate forces were kind of using these rocks here as cover as they've got a uh, artillery barrage that were, was coming, you know, from, from the south uh, here. And then this uh, placard here kind of talks about the fighting that was going on in Lee Town, uh, in Morgan's Wood and Oberson's Cornfield and Foster's Farm, which we went by each of those uh, three areas. But that's right off over here. So you, if you can see there, right in the middle there is Little uh, Mountain. And to the, that little bump right in the center of the screen and to the left of that is uh, off in the distance is Oberson's Cornfield. And then a little bit further south is Morgan's Wood. And again, that was where, uh, Morgan's Wood was where kind of the uh, Confederate attack stalled uh, because the, due to lack of, of leadership. Uh, that kind of stalled there, and uh, but it, it heated up again uh, 
like from 2 p.m. to sunset is what it's saying here. And then just north uh, of that little bump in the middle there is, uh, then I'm talking about little mountain right there. But just to the, the north of that or to the right of that in the picture here was Foster's Farm where some uh, 600 Union Cavalry attacked a 7,000 man Confederate column. So that's where we were talking about where the, uh, the uh, Iowa Cavalry and then uh, a battery, I think, of three cannons uh, attacked the, the, the uh, marching Confederate soldiers uh, and then were repelled. And that's where the uh, uh, Cherokee uh, units uh, uh, ran the, uh, the northern forces from uh, the field. So as you can see, this is a relatively good uh, location on the battlefield to kind of see uh, a, a perspective of how the battle unfolded on the March 7th. All right, here's a different perspective of that rocky outcrop that uh, is at the bottom of or at the top of stop seven. As you go along the tour route here, you see a little bit more of where the uh, Confederate forces were holed up and using this for for cover and uh, from the uh, Union barrages you can kind of see a little bit of uh, it up there a little bit at the top as well we are at stop eight along the Pea Ridge battlefield route at the Elkhorn Tavern this is one of the primary uh, locales along the tour, uh, some place that everybody likes to uh, come to because uh, it was a pivotal point of the battle. Uh, the Confederate forces under Van Dorn had come along that back road up along Elkhorn Mountain, down Telegraph Road. There was a lot of fighting just outside of here and uh, Elkhorn Tavern was seized by uh, the Confederates, uh, well behind the Union forces line, which were way off behind those uh, group of trees right over there. Um, and so this was kind of became a headquarters for uh, Van Dorn uh, at, uh, at the end of the day's battle along here. Um, as you can see here, it says Elkhorn Tavern taken. Uh, and this is at the end or towards the end of the day on March 7th. And this is where they camped out. And it was along, uh, it was here or close to midnight that Van Dorn found out that uh, his two commanders uh, of, um, had been killed uh, along the western side of the battlefield so uh elkhorn tavern was kind of a key spot here and as you see here vulnerable in victory it was the fiery end of the best day of earl van dorn's 20 years as a professional soldier however at midnight two young texans brought word to the confederate headquarters that generals mcculloch and mcintosh had been killed at the Lee Town fighting. And actually Van Dorn had used this kind of uh, uh, Elkhorn Tavern as kind of a supply depot uh, on some of his uh, endeavors into Missouri. There are you know, some battles that I need to cover up in Missouri. I've got uh, Carthage, if you look at my, um, my From the Road series, covered a reenactment at the Battle of Carthage, but there's also Wilson Creek, which is just outside of Springfield, which is a major uh, battle in this area. So here is Elkhorn Tavern, and along this road right here, this sidewalk, this was Telegraph Road, uh, which is what it was called at the time of the Civil War. It was established in uh, 1838 by the uh, U.S. military to travel from St. Louis down to Fort Smith, um, and then later when the Telegraph came around, they uh, called it Telegraph Road for communication lines. Along here is Huntsville Road down that uh, area right there. So as you can see here, Elkhorn Tavern was at a very 
a good location to deal with traffic along these two roads. Also Telegraph Road, uh, before it was called Telegraph Road, was also a major um, Indian route as well, or Native American route. Uh, and also was this road was part of the Trail of Tears and also this road was used in the to have Confederate forces move north that direction uh, for the Battle of uh, Wilson Creek, uh, or actually to and from probably on on that road to that battle, which is uh, in Missouri outside of Springfield, uh, about th three miles along this route right here, or due due north here. Uh, you'll run into Missouri. You'll get to the Missouri border, and then uh, further north of that is uh, Springfield and uh, Wilson Creek. So as you can see here, Elkhorn Tavern had a very uh, good location for uh, communication, for supply, um, along the Missouri-Arkansas border. Now this is not the uh, original Elkhorn Tavern uh, that had been destroyed or burnt down and this this uh, location had been has been rebuilt on several times but this is an approximation of what Elkhorn Tavern looked like at the time of the Battle of Pea Ridge. Right around this area here there was a campfire and a council of war for the uh, Confederate forces on the night of March 7th. Uh, again, we made a note earlier about the report of uh, McCullough and McIntosh being killed. There was also a third commander uh, after McIntosh was killed. There was a third commander uh, of the Confederate forces that was taken by the Union forces. And so you had a fourth commander uh, around Lee Town or the most of the forces that were around that area commanding the Confederate forces had, um, had taken command. I think his name was Pike. And so, uh, again, the chain of command was decimated on the far west. And so much of the uh, initiative or momentum or surprise that the Confederate forces had was lost at that. So this council of war was convened here to try to figure out what the Confederate forces were going to do on March 8th, uh, having secured one of their uh, objectives here at Elkhorn, but did not uh, have their objective uh, taken at uh, further west. They had not taken out the Union forces like they had expected to. Anyway, this is a very interesting spot to come to along here you have to, this is a must see uh, along the Elkhorn along the Pea Ridge Battlefield but this is Elkhorn Tavern. Here's a placard talking about the uh, lifeline for two armies. It's talking about the location of Elkhorn Tavern along again that major route there from St. Louis down to Fort Smith. As you can see there so you see P Ridge on there, that's right around where Elkhorn Tavern is at. And we're gonna head over here to some of these monuments. Uh, there's two monuments on this uh, area of the battlefield. These were actually uh, put there by the soldiers themselves, uh, kind of a combined effort of Union and Southern soldiers and they actually came back here to uh, commemorate them in the battlefield. So let's get a little bit closer to those two uh, white monuments over there. Here we have a placard called Remembrance and Reunion. This is talking about these two monuments here that were placed in 1887 and 1889 by the soldiers who fought here. So. If you look over here, that one is the 1887 one, I believe, and this one was put up in 1889, and they were to commemorate uh, the soldiers coming back here to uh, remember this battle. And if you look at that picture, I got a little bit of glare there. There's a picture of the soldiers, and if you look over here, there's like a key to show you who in that picture were Union and who were Confederate. Uh, they, their descendants decided, tried to come back and, um, you know, 
have national recognition for this uh, over the years through the 20s and, and 30s. And in 1956, uh, Eisenhower signed a law to create and protect the legacy as Pea Ridge National Military Park. So if you look at these two monuments, here is the original one to uh, commemorate the soldiers coming back here. And here is the one from 1889. The first one was from 1887. I was talking with the uh, park ranger here about monuments and, um, you know, monuments that are on battlefields and are put here by the soldiers especially, but are here to commemorate history and for us to remember history. You know, I, I really don't take issue with that. I know others might, but uh, other monuments that are put up at a much later date and for other reasons, well, might have some issue with those or people might have some issues with those. But if you look here, you can see this is the 1889 monument right down from the 1887 and right on these grounds that we that I stand right now right outside of Elkhorn Tavern over there is where the soldiers came again in 1887 and 1889 to uh, commemorate the battle that was fought here. This is stop nine on the Pea Ridge battlefield called Confederate Sunset. Uh, at the end of the first day of battle, as sunset, about 3,000 rebels from Missouri made their final charge here. Crossing Ben Ruddick's stubbed cornfield, they ran straight toward the muzzles of federal cannons, and uh, this last Union line held firm, rebuffed Confederates, ebbed back to Elkhorn Tavern. In the dust, both armies feared they were standing on the brink of collapse. So the last bit of fighting took place in a cornfield right around here. And this is the the road here that goes along a circle route around the entire battlefield. We'll walk up to this placard here and we get a perfect storm of shot and shell. Now this gets to the morning of March 8th. Uh, here two armies lined up for a second day of fighting after a long bitterly cold night. The Confederate artillerists set up guns along the edge of the woods. The Union battle line was only uh, 500 yards away, a five minute walk across open fields. At 8 a.m. the Union cannon bellowed out their first volley, concentrating first on Confederate artillery position. The Confederate gunners fired back. The roar of the big guns was heard more than 50 miles away. Uh, the Yankee barrage went on nonstop for two hours. It was the largest artillery shelling of the Civil War up to that point. An unrelenting bombardment forced the surviving Confederate cannoneers, by then low on ammunition, back to the safety of Elkhorn Tavern. So here's where the Confederate forces, uh, cal uh, 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 artillery cannons lined up. For point of reference, Elkhorn Tavern is right back that way behind those trees. So that's where the Confederate headquarters uh, was as of the night of the 7th. This is the morning of the 8th. And as you can see, they have some cannons out here showing where the Confederate uh, artillery was lined up, firing across the field. And if you look down over there, you'll see, if you look off in the distance, you can see the Union uh, artillery firing this direction. And in fact, that Union artillery, again, was moved up from their more southern location uh, and facing the other direction, but now moved up to face the Confederate forces in this direction. Um, uh, we actually ran the Confederate forces off the field and uh, ran them back to Elkhorn Tavern, which was the beginning of the end of the Confederates, because then the Union forces advanced on this position, and there was a massive retreat in that direction, back past Elkhorn Tavern, and back south into Arkansas and the Boston Mountains. So this gives you kind of an interesting view of the 
the battlefield here. Those cannons there were probably the same cannons that were facing uh, Elkhorn Mountain, which is in that direction over there, and we're trying to drive some of the Union forces uh, away on, uh, on March 7th. So anyway, so there is a view of the battlefield. Here we are at stop 10 along the Pea Ridge Battlefield, which is the last stop along the battlefield proper. Uh, there's another stop, but it's the actually uh, trenches that were outside uh, the battlefield. It's where the Union forces set up at first and then um, uh, moved back to this area, which is the battlefield proper. But this is that Union uh, artillery line that was set up all along this area here to drive the Confederate forces back. We were just up there looking at the uh, Confederate artillery line uh, and this is the Union artillery line that actually uh, was successful in pushing the Confederate forces back uh, to Elkhorn Tavern and eventually a mass retreat from the battlefield which uh, ended the uh, second day of fighting uh, here at Pea Ridge and a massive Confederate retreat back south into the uh, security of the Boston Mountains. But if you look out there, there's a relatively long uh, Union artillery line that is along here. And again, uh, by the uh, placard that was at the earlier stop, it said that the cannon fire could be heard 50 miles away and was the largest artillery barrage of the Civil War up into that point. Okay, this is our last stop along the uh, Pea Ridge battlefield route. This is stop 11, but it's outside the battlefield. It's about a little over half a mile away from the main battlefield. So if you look at this map here, you see that we're further down uh, 62 Highway and this is the trenches, uh, the federal trenches uh, were set up here because this is where they thought the fight was going to be. Uh, and the Little Sugar Creek is right off in that direction over there. And so the uh, Union forces set up trenches along this area here. Actually, there's you can see some of the embattlements up that trail right there so let's uh let's go up that road well here is the top of that hill there's not a lot to see up here other than it's a a good hill and it overlooks off in the distance there is the little sugar creek where they thought the uh confederates were going to advance from but uh there's really not much up here to see uh other than you know they made an, a path here that's kind of eroded over the years and there's parts of it that's not even a road anymore but uh I did get my cardio for the day it is a relatively steep hill and uh who was the idiot that had uh, biscuits and gravy for breakfast I don't know anyway this is the top of the hill on at point or stop 11 along the um uh, P Ridge Battlefield, and uh, you know, it's worth going to just to say you were here to see where the original Union uh, force was uh, building trenches and uh, trying to protect where the uh, Confederates were coming from. But once you get here, it's basically a whole lot of this. So, thanks for coming with me, guys and gals, and whoever's watching this. Uh, thanks for spending some time with me. hope this was interesting going through the different stops along the Pea Ridge battlefield. And, uh, you know, I learned more today. This is my second time here, but this is only a little bit more than an hour away from my house. So I should come here more often. And if I do, I'll try to bring you all along with me. But uh, thanks for stopping by and walking with me, sharing my cardio for the day burning off some biscuits and gravy and there you have it i hope you all have a great rest of your day
Thanks for watching.